All right, let's keep going here on our worksheet uh, with the hammer number 16. Number 16 is a ball peen hammer, and I don't have one of those because we don't have a metal shop right here. The metal shop would be next door. Uh, but the ball peen hammer, kind of like in this photo here, this little drawing, has a very rounded end on it, and that would be for peening metal. And so that would be called a ball peen hammer. P-E-E-N, ball peen. Uh, the next hammer we have here on 17 is a finish hammer. And a finish hammer comes in two varieties. A finish hammer comes in a fairly straight claw like this one, and then a curved claw, which has a much steeper bend on the claw part. This is pretty straight. This is a straight clawed, clawed uh, finish hammer. And we know it's a finish hammer because the smooth face right here, this is really smooth, as opposed to a hammer like this one, you can see this has a really rough waffle pattern here. That is a framing hammer. You might ask why this would have a framing grip on it, uh, what that's for. And that's so if you're hitting a nail, um, if the nail, when you hit it, tends to bend a little bit, you can actually grab it with practice. You can strike it in a way that will straighten it back out so that you can drive it all the way in uh, without having to stop and, and bend the nail or take it out to fix it. Um, a framing hammer is a very useful tool for that. You'll also notice that the framing hammer actually is much larger in surface area than the finish hammer. The finish hammer is nice and smooth and small so that you don't leave big marks. Uh, the next tool here we have is number 18, and that is your set. The nail set has a dimple in the bottom of it. If you can see that little dimple underneath the bottom of it, they come in different sizes. And that's basically for taking a finish nail. You put it right over the top of the finish nail. You tap it with your finish hammer, not your framing hammer. And when you tap that thing down, uh, it'll sink the nail below the surface so you can cover it with putty and hide it and make your work look really nice. The next one we have on this list is number 19. It looks kind of like a nail set, but it actually has the same tip as our awl. It's sharpened. Uh, that's a punch for metal work. We don't have those in the class here. If you were going to be drilling a hole in metal, you'd want to hit it with a punch first, put a dimple so that when your drill bit goes on there, the drill bit doesn't want to walk on you and try and move around. It stays right where you want that hole. Number 20, here we have 20 is a mallet. I don't use that particular style of mallet. We use these mallets in my class for using chisel work. Um, I prefer this style of mallet. I think that this is a lot less um, harmful to your joints long term. This is far more ergonomic to be able to use a mallet like this, and it's just more comfortable. So this is the preferred mallet style that we use, and this makes a great turning project. All right, um, let's finish this page up here. So. 21 is an egg beater drill. Uh, I don't use those in the shop right now, but uh, an egg beater drill is pretty uh, common if you go to swap meets and flea markets to find old tools like that. Number 22 is a drill bit, specifically a, a twist style bit. And the twist bit does not have any sort of brad point, okay? This particular bit here is very different. It has this spiral tip on it for driving it in, and it's got little cutting wings on it. The cutting wings are going to be very different, um, and the top of the drill bit has this little like pyramid-looking shape on here. Uh, let me grab a twist bit so you can really see the difference. So this is a twist bit, and you can see that the shaft is just round to go into a drill. The twist bit is just twisted, and the tip is slightly tapered. This is okay for metal and woodwork, whereas this drill bit has a little tip in the middle very different style tip. You can kind of see the difference there. It is twisted, still has a round sh uh, shaft, but this is called a brad point, and this is only used for woodworking. This would be very heavily damaged if you tried to take this to a piece of metal. Uh, our next tool, number 23, is a wood brace, and the wood brace is specifically designed to be used with these type of drill bits. This is the brace bit, and this is the wood brace. The brace has a chuck on it that you can open up, you put the bit inside the chuck, and you can actually um, drill a hole with this with a lot of very good control, which is why I really like it. You can also switch directions by turning this little uh, knurled fitting right here, and that will allow you to um, change the direction in which you're um, turning if you are trying to get this to ratchet in one particular direction or the other. Or you can lock it out so you can use it in both directions. 
Um, great little tool uh, for very good controlled work and learning how to use drill bits uh, with accuracy. Number 25 is a card scraper. We have little hand scrapers in a lot of different profiles. This one's flat and square. This one's got a rounded edge with different size rounds. So you could scrape the surface of something and make it really nice and smooth and they're clean. But the scrapers probably will need a little bit of attention before you use them. They are also used to clean our uh, glue table, which uh, tends to break the edge on them. Number 26, that is a bench dog. And a bench dog is used to go in the holes of the table, all of our workbenches in the shop here. And there's another little uh, protruding dog on the vices where we can squeeze the wood together and hold it in place. I'll show you that here in just a second. We'll go do that. Let's look at 27 first. So 27 is regular pliers. These are a slip joint plier. So this is why it's a slip joint. This is for grabbing small stuff. And if we slip the joint, now we can grab a larger diameter of something. That's a slip joint plier. Okay, the last one is a countersinking bit. If screws are gonna be set in a countersunk fashion where they're flush to the, the table and not sticking out, um, that's countersunk. You need a special bit to do that, uh, such as a countersinking bit. Let's take a look at how this bench dog works. Come on over here. Let's see if I can show you guys this. So, assuming that we want to clamp this piece of wood, I wouldn't want to have to take this vise all the way out to here. It may not even go that far to clamp this piece of wood. There's a hole in the table right here. I could drop the bench dog in it. And there's a dog right here on top of the vise. So I only now need to bring the, the vise out this much, okay? Let's try this. No, I gotta go a little further. So that's now secured in place. If we were gonna be planing this, we would want to make sure that this part of the vise, this dog over here on the vise, is below the surface of the wood. See how it's sticking up? This would damage our planing tool, so we would not want to do that. This actually needs to go down just a little bit until it's under the surface that we are working on. And that would be the proper setup of the bench dog and the vise. Remember that we never leave these open because you don't want to run into them. We always want to close this. so that it's loose, so that if you do run into it, it doesn't hurt as much. 